In the classic mode of Simpler, we can have a single sample that we drag and drop into the device that is then triggered by the full range of our available MIDI notes, or the full range of our piano roll. Then depending upon which note we trigger, that manipulates how fast or how slow the sample is played back, unless we've triggered or enabled the warp mode, which we're going to talk about in later videos. So for the time being, we're just ignoring this section of Simpler, which is one of the new features within Simpler. So to start with, let's go ahead and drag and drop in a sample to start working with. I'm going to pop this out, get rid of my browser, and then I'm going to start using the start and the end markers to select the portion of the sample that I actually want to work with. So there's the start and here's the end. And now if I zoom in, you'll notice that by default, Simpler has what's called snap enabled. So if we look really closely here at the end, as I drag this back and forth, you can see that the actual yellow portion represents the portion of the sample that will play back if I trigger it to play back. And then the gray portion represents the portion of the sample that won't play back. You'll notice that everything on the right hand side of that end marker is grayed out, plus a little bit that bleeds into the left hand side. And this is because snap is enabled. What snap does is it forces Simpler to crop the sample at a zero crossing. You can think of zero crossings as being there is no pressure change, air pressure change, either positive or negative. And in fact, that's what this graph here is showing us. Let's turn up the volume so we can see a little bit more. Positive air pressure moving into negative air pressure. Or we could also think of this as a timeline of a set of instructions for our speakers. And when we're at a zero crossing, the speaker cone is neither pushed out or pulled in. And as we go down, the speaker cone is pulled in. As we go up, it becomes pushed out and vice versa. So this, the snap mode here is trying to save us from having this pop sound that is caused from the speaker cone instantaneously either being pushed out or pulled in. But this can be kind of frustrating if I'm actually trying to crop my sample to be at one of those non-zero crossing moments. So if I switch off that snap mode, you can see the sample or the portion of the sample that's selected will go all the way up until that... Uh, point at which I've selected. And this is actually my preferred mode of working, is to have snap, snap mode turned off. That way I'm actually in complete control of where I've got that sample selected, because it can have a huge influence on the sound. Having it here versus here will dramatically influence uh, the sound created. So that's the snap mode, probably the first thing you should be aware of as you're starting to crop down your sample to the portion that you want to actually work with. Then the next parameter here, the gain, allows me to adjust the volume of that sample. You can see that represented graphically as well there. Let's get a little bit closer cropping there, right up to the beginning of our sound. Then we have start, which works as a percentage within the selected portion of the sample. So if I put it at 50%, then I'm actually going to start at 50% through 50% of the way through the sample as opposed to back at the beginning of the sample. So this is just a way of uh, dynamically changing what, por what part of the sample I'm working with. And we have length, which is the opposite. Where does it actually end within the selected portion of the sample? Then to have access to these last two features, loop and fade, we have to enable looping by clicking here. And now as I sustain the note, you can see in here that it actually loops that selected portion of the sample, whereas if I have it turned off, it just plays through once and stops. So with that turned on, you can see loop and fade have both been enabled. As I decrease the loop percentage, it's actually going to loop a smaller portion of the sample. So it'll still start at the beginning of the selected portion, play all the way to the end, then jump back to the beginning of that loop section and repeat that over and over and over again as long as the note is still held. So this is what this would sound like. So I open that up. Then fade represents a crossfade between the start and the end of the looped portion of the sample, which allows us to go from a really rough loop, just smoothing that out, but you can hear it's also incorporating more of the material on this side of the loop and eliminating some of the material on this side of the loop as we get a crossfade between the two. The last two parameters here, voice and retrigger. Uh, indicates how many notes this simpler instrument is capable of simultaneously playing. So in this case we're capable of simultaneously playing six notes or having six voices. We can have up to 32 or down to one. It's best practice to only use or only have available 
the amount of notes that you actually need for that synthesizer. So if I'm creating a bass sound, I'll only work with one voice uh, to, to save CPU power. If I'm working with a really long evolving pad sound, I might bump up the number of voices so that I can have richer, more harmonically active sounds. In retrigger mode, let's go back to six, retrigger or retrigger, what this indicates is that when it's enabled, if I continually repeat the same note over and over again, so if I play D, 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 D over and over again, let's shrink our sample down here and add a little bit of release so we have a longer sustaining sound there. In retrigger mode, if I continually play the same note, it's going to continually use the same voice that it previously used for that note. It's going to stop the previous iteration of that note in order to start the new iteration. So as long as I continue playing the same note, I'm actually only using one of the available voices for the synthesizer. If I disable that, it's now going to cycle through all the available voices, continually leaving the previous voice, uh, releasing out the previous trigger of that same note and use a new voice to play the new iteration of that note. And what this results in is a much more timbrely rich uh, sound because we'll have multiple of the same notes stacking up on top of each other. So here's again what it sounds like with just one voice being used for the same note. And if I turn off retrigger and play that same thing, You can hear it kind of gets this phasey sound as we get different versions of the same note building up on top of each other. So that's classic mode.